Hey, what's up everybody? And today I want to give you a little bit of information about the food shortages situation and why I believe that it's coming back and what is going to take place. All right. It's really going to be based on how our situation goes over the next year or so with our harvest and everything else and what happens between now and then, meaning the beginning of this coming year. Now, for some of you that don't really understand the whole planning and how farmers do their crops and stuff, if you're planting, say, your, uh, your winter wheat for next year, you're going to plant that in the fall of this year, you'll harvest it in the spring. Now, if you're planting your summertime wheat, you're going to plant that in the spring and you're going to harvest that in the fall, which is coming up. Harvest starts for a lot of the wheat at the end of September. Now, there's been a lot of stuff that has been going on that I'm sure you all are quite aware of. And what has been taking place is we've had a lot of drought out west. We've had a lot of rain and stuff in the Midwest over towards the Mid-Atlantic and up into the Northeast. We've also had extreme flooding in a lot of areas that has been all over the national news. This all goes into why I am talking about these food shortage situations that are going to be more than likely arising across this whole globe come the end of this year, beginning of next year. But I don't believe that it will end into a famine here in this country because we are a mass producer of food. And even though that we, you know, are struggling in certain areas and stuff, we still have a lot of food. What it's going to affect is countries such as Africa, Asia, and those type of countries. And what's going to take place in those scenarios if there's no food there for these people to eat, what are they going to do? What would you do? You would probably be looking for some place to go where you can get food for your family, correct? So more than likely, a lot of these people may be headed into Europe, which is going to cause a ripple effect in the European markets and the food supply in the European area. And it's not going to help with the recession and with the global food shortage that is taking place. What's going to take place here in America is if that does take place, if Europe has a problem, America has a problem because we always tend to help Europe out. That's just the way it's always been done. The things that are stacking up against us at this point in time is a recession, high inflation, and you have the high gas prices, high diesel prices, very high fertilizer prices. So a lot of farmers cannot afford to buy the fertilizer that they need for all their land. Some farmers, as I have seen in the reports, have split their properties where they have the fertilizer side and then they have another plot of land that doesn't have the fertilizer because they know they're going to take a loss on their yield on the side that doesn't have the fertilizer in it. Which makes everything generate and grow and produce more than non-fertilizer products. So what does that mean for us? I mean, where are we at with the numbers so far this year? So I just want to break this down for you real quick, folks. I mean, so all these numbers I'm going to give you come right from the federal government, right from the website and everything else. So you all can go on there and you can research it and find it. And you guys can read the whole article and look at all the different numbers and everything is down. I'm just going to give you a few just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. So rice production in the United States is down 0.3% year over year. All right. These are all based on year over year numbers. Wheat is down 0.72%. Corn is down 2.49%. Soybeans are down 12.3%. A lot of these 
really make you sit back and wonder, you know, what's going on? Are we going to be okay? And, and, you know, what kind of a situation is this going to put us in? What will happen to us here is, like I said, I don't think there'll be a famine or anything in this country, but with the whole world in this basket together, what's going to take place is our prices are going to continue to rise, which is going to ensure that the food shortages here in this country are going to be based on you're not going to be able to afford the food. The food shortages are going to be in your homes. So what can we do at this point in time? You know, I mean, there's certain things that we really have to think about. You know, there's certain things that we have to really start concentrating on and trying to make sure that whatever we're doing is productive, is being using our heads and good common sense to try and to ensure that we will be putting away food and supplies for our families for these hard times to come. You see, even the government come out and they stated that, well, you know, last month was only 8.5% on the inflation rate. It went down a little bit. You had the president came out on national TV and he stated, well, guess what? Some stuff went up, some stuff came down, as I talked about in another video, but, and we're at zero. It washed everything out. We don't have to worry about anything. Meanwhile, food prices at a 43-year high. Think about that, folks. The food you're buying right now has not cost this much since 43 years ago. It's putting a huge strain on everybody. That's why what you can do is you have to figure out a way. You have to come up with a plan. You have to really start concentrating on trying to put away whatever you can for you and your family to ride this storm out, folks, because this is going to get ugly and it's going to get ugly fast. So right now, we have to make sure that we are staying prepared. We have to make sure that we are staying ahead of the eight ball. We have to be prepared. It is so imperative that you understand the true meaning of what this is doing and what this can cause to you and your family. For me, I'm trying to get you ready for the unexpected later. I'm trying to provide you with the information for you and your family so you won't have to go through these hardships without being prepared. The hardships from the ongoing food price inflation, the bulk of the harvest results will be in in September, October, and November. So please do me a favor and subscribe, and I will keep you updated on the newest developments. As always, I appreciate everything you do for this channel. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe. So this way here, you'll get all the news and information that you need to keep you and your family safe. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you again for watching this video. Stay safe. Keep prepping. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.